you can see right in the center here that I'm introducing to our guest today he knows full well what this is about and that's our antibacterial honey from Medibee. Medibee of course is in the heart of Derbyshire with three bee farms as you well know and its success on antibacterial honey now not nationally but internationally is quite profound. I thought this morning you might enjoy and find out about how this has happened and how this is qualified by someone who is an expert when it comes to germs, bacteria, bugs and everything else. Because we say that it is antibacterial, well how do you know that we're telling the truth? This morning I've invited our guest along, Professor Milton Wainwright, who is at Sheffield University. In fact you've been there quite a while, haven't you Milton? Yeah, around about 42 years I think. Wow, they don't seem to day too Madame long. Boy, yes. <laughs> Which is lovely. Uh, we welcome him here today to Medibee to tell you a little bit about the background of his testing and about his laboratory in Sheffield at Sheffield University and how it's all come about. I only met Milton probably 12, 14 years ago by pure accident and that's when we realised our honeys here at Troway Hall in Derbyshire, our honeys were getting darker and darker and darker and today you see them in their full bloom of antibacterial activity. We also know that people depend on it in many ways for calcium absorption, for example. We know that a sense of well-being all through the year, people swear by it for coughs and colds. It never, ever, ever stops the, the congratulations that we have. But Milton, I was a scientist in a small way. You've been a scientist and still are in a big way. So that we trust you, we monitor you. Tell me a little bit about what you do at Sheffield. Sure. Um, well, as you say, by the way, it's great to be back at Troy. So it's a beautiful day out there as well. Yeah. Okay, what we, I, I work at Sheffield University, and I'm a microbiologist, right? Now mm -hmm. that means I work with germs. I work with bacteria, a little less so viruses, but mainly bacteria, which cause diseases. Yes. They cause diseases in man, animals, and plants. Yes. And this means. Um, after 42 years, I know a little bit, I suppose, just a little, about, just a little bit, about bacteria and the way they cause diseases. Yeah. So, as you say, about a dozen years ago, you gave me the opportunity to test these honeys to see if they're antibacterial. Do they kill the bacteria that cause diseases? Mm -hmm. And we can do this in the laboratory. It's, it's relatively straightforward. And we take the, your honeys, take them direct from here, and uh, we study them to see if they kill bacteria. Yeah. Obviously the one that we're particularly interested in is a bacterium called MRSA. And many, many viewers will know that this is a multiple resistant bacterium. This is resistant to most of the antibiotics we, we try to use to cure indeed, diseases. Indeed. And as you know, um, it's becoming more and more, bacteria becoming more and more resistant. There was a time if you went to a hospital and you were treated with antibiotics, they could use a small dose and you were cured within a day. I know, and most people now, when they go to hospital, right. Milton, actually go in free of MRSA and come out That's with what, it and contaminate. You know, it's very interesting. I was talking to um, yeah. a, a doctor who was working in the 1930s, and he told me the worst place to go for diseases in the 1930s, before antibiotics, was a hospital. Many people thought if you went to a hospital, you would come out dead. Yes. And amazingly, not, not quite that bad yet, yeah. but we're in the situation where you can pick up diseases in hospitals. And this is why, of course, they encourage you to wash your hands yes. and as you enter and so on. Yes. So, yeah, we've been working on these honeys and we've been testing them to see if they kill bacteria like MRSA. Say, yeah. So what have you found then with our antibacterial honey? I mean, is it correct that we can call it antibacterial? And you also, I believe, contrasted them with the M honeys or the That's right. Honeys, well, obviously, when we were testing them, we needed a, some kind of gold standard. We need something to test against. Indeed. Uh, so we took the Manuka honeys. Uh, you provided them kindly. Yeah. Unopened so that you could open Absolutely, them. of course. Uh, it's yeah. all done very sterile. It's all done very seriously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because we are a serious laboratory, obviously. And... Um, we tested them against it. So every time we tested one of your honeys, mm -hmm. we tested it against a variety of Manuka honeys. Yes. And lo and behold, we found that in 
practically all cases, your honeys were equivalent to Manuka honeys. Amazing. That means that although Manuka honey has the kind of fame for being antibacterial, your honeys gave equal inhibition of bacteria. That's wonderful. So if you say Manuka honeys are good at killing bacteria, well, so are your honeys. So honey. And I think the most wonderful thing here is when we go back to its origins in so many ways, Milton, mm. when we look at Manuka honey, the word Manuka means tea tree. Right. And in New Zealand, it grows everywhere in your back garden, among slates, on roofs, absolutely everywhere. And therefore, we think about manuka honey, the tea tree plant, and it naturally gives antibacterial exudates, one of which the bee collects in the form of nectar, and then, of course, we get the honey. Now, can I tell you all, this is not how it happens here, and we brought Milton in specially to find out where and how was this antibacterial activity festooning itself in our honey. How was it happening? And it took us a couple of years to mm -hmm. find out, didn't That's it right, not? Yeah. And we realised, of course, that our trees, our Christmas trees, our plantation of Christmas trees, we probably go 50 to 60,000 Christmas trees here. That's a lot of Christmas trees, believe you me. And this morning I brought you one or two samples in. Now this is not probably a known Christmas tree, but it is a pine, it's a Scots pine. And everywhere I feel it, and this morning, Milton, you will be well aware, you come mm, down well, here, it is, yeah. and it's gummed and resin, and it's wow. very, very sticky. Mm. And the smell, smells wonderful, yeah. And of course the smell of the volatile components and the flavonoids that are coming out. I'll show you another branch of our Christmas tree. Now, this is something wonderful. It may look a little bit busy. This is a noble, and you said mm. this was especially important to the bees, if That's you remember, right, yeah. Milton. Mm -hmm. And then in fact you can see all the exudates coming out. Right. And often, although you didn't tell me at the time, I realised when you'd gone, can you believe, that you had picked out the trees with the most gums <laughs> and resins that also had the most wonderful yeah. volatile aromas. And the two go so together. So that's kind of an inbuilt test. Um, yes. Without me knowing about it. That's very yeah. good. Yeah, isn't very isn't that amazing? Yeah. So Christmas comes early, of course. <laughs> well, yes, it does. Well, the one thing Milton's always been, I haven't actually yet taken him into a beehive, but I intend to do it. He has oh. watched me from afar. And this would be the colour from a normal bit of comb from the beehive. And it would be a creamy colour. And eventually, within a week, two weeks, a month here, it begins to go brown and be tarnished with a brown substance. And these are the gums and resins. And Milton, can you see them? That's right, yeah. Sure. And you begin to realise that these gums and resins wow. contain... You can smell beautiful. them again. It smells beautiful. Wonderful. Yeah. And then you begin to realise that a lot of the comb that we have in the beehive eventually turns out look to be that colour. That's right. Yeah. And this is because that we have smells the gums and resins. Again, Oops. contains something that we call propolis. Oh, wow. Beautiful smell. So basically, we're not having any special plant. We've just got a whole variety of what we call coniferous trees. But don't forget as well, in France they have wonderful poplar trees that give probably the most amount of these gums and resins that we call propolis. And propolis is found in our creams for eczema, in our antibacterial honey, in our propolis essence, which nothing can beat that for cold sores, and for aches and pains, our propolis capsules. Mm -hmm. Now, Milton, when you've actually done all this, and yeah. you've been testing antibacterially, we have people now so hooked on this honey, it is unbelievable. You right. have this honey as yeah. well, your family has it. How do you feel it is when you taste, for example? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't particularly a honey fan when I, uh, when I got involved in this work, but now, of course, I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy the, uh, the using it and so on. Let me tell you why, why your honeys are so good at killing bacteria. Go on. Um, most honeys you get in the shop are very simple, they're not complex, and you've just alluded to this, you just kind of mentioned this. They're very simple, they contain basically sugar and water, but what your honey contain is complexity, what we call polyphenols, yes. they're complex materials. The bee is picking up very complex materials and these are the compounds which kill the bacteria. Wow. We know that honey kills bacteria, the sugar content itself kills bacteria, also, we know that the, it contains hydrogen peroxide, Indeed. which kills. And these are found in, in, in common garden honeys, co common uh, supermarket honeys. But what your honeys, and you've alluded to this in the, the colour, what your honeys have is complexity. Wow. And it's these complex yes. compounds yeah. which kill the bacteria. Wow. So generally... And this is coming then generally from the trees around our environment, exactly. basically. Exactly. If you didn't have those kind of trees yeah. or those kind of sources of... Um, the honey and so on, the nectar, you wouldn't get these complex materials. 
So, so it's a marriage made in heaven in a well, way that we didn't know about. It's purely things. accidental, I suppose. You didn't plant the trees for this. No, um, we didn't. And certainly I didn't uh, know when I did the testing. And we didn't know the two actually fused together. Exactly. In this well, it's we? wonderful. It's always nice, you know, to have a kind, <laughs> kind of a control. I didn't know about the, uh, you know, these plants and so on. I didn't know about the complexity when I tested them. No. And I just thought they'd be box standard honeys you get from the supermarket, and we might get a bit of activity. So I was quite astounded when I compared the activity with Manuka. Really? I mean, obviously Manuka is extremely expensive, isn't it? Well, it's about I mean, four times the price of <laughs> well, ours. And, and, and the rest. I mean, yeah. I, I paid, can you believe this, for, for testing, for comparison, I paid £50 for some British Manuka with a, in a bottle that size. How can Manuka be British, though, if it comes from New Well, they've got, I think, down in Cornwall or Devon, they've oh. got some Manuka trees. Ah. So they're making right. it. And, okay. you know, that's fine. £50? Uh, £50. Well, wow. that was an expensive bottle of honey. Fortunately, I didn't pay for it. it was part was of it better than ours? Then? No, no better, no better, no worse. It was exactly. So I think you should start selling your honeys around forty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're obviously we'll doing. Still have a you're obviously, business. and I can yeah. take ten of that. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. Uh, No, but seriously, oh, um, they they really are antibacterial honeys, and they. I, I, haven't, I found a, a, the occasional uh, jar of other people's honeys in the UK which matched them, yeah. um, but certainly not generally um, the case. You know I think a lot of people don't realise either that, of course, antibacterial honey like this, even the Manuka honeys, whatever, if they're antibacterial, can be used as a topical agent, of course, for, for small wounds. Yeah. And don't forget that it's even better when you dilute the honey, because diluting the honey enables for hydrogen peroxide to be released from that honey. And you might like to know that during the Boer War, the First War, um, and certainly in the First War, the Russians were very, very canny. And Milton, can you believe, when they carried barrels of honey along, and they were obviously against Napoleon, but when the Russians carried these barrels of honey, they waited till the honey had been eaten by the rest of the troops, and they gathered up the bottom where it was brown and awful looking stuff. Wow. And this, of course, contained propolis from yeah. the trees no, and the gums and resin. I didn't know that, Gloria. That's amazing. And um, this is this is the colour of it. Yeah, that's. And you, you begin to realise yeah, it's yeah. dark. And it has a beautiful day. smell, of course, oh, doesn't it? Oh. Just like the trees. Oh, that's. Oh. I can smell oh, it all day. Oh, God, it's almost, <laughs> wow, sensational, let's put it that way. <laughs> that's, that's one of the best aromas around. You, you can keep your uh, yes. gooshy and whatever called. These you can, and I do begin to wonder if it could be a sexual attractant. Could oh, we oh actually, steady on, could, steady on, could we steady do on, this, You know, at the end of the day. <laughs> but I think as well, that the Russians always use the goo, the brown substance that contain propolis. And don't forget, probably the Russians are some of the best beekeepers in this world. Is that right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so propolis is still used in surgery today in Czechoslovakia, yeah. Romania, oh, Poland, yeah. Russia. Of course, it's so used in this country. No, we we, we use it. Um, but we, it's not accepted, though, is it, by well, the drug people? Uh, well, obviously, the drug people don't get involved with it because they're making no. profits from drugs. They are. But um, no, we we use it on what we call indolent ulcers, uh, ulcers in um, old people, which yeah. can't be healed. They're antibiotic resistant. Resistant, and in some cases the honey completely heals. In fact, it prevents them from having to amputate the leg. Isn't that so, amazing? So, uh, no, the medical establishment is waking up to the fact that, that honey can be very... You can actually buy um, bandages impregnated with honey. Yes, so you can. It yes. is, um, yeah. it's a, there's, a, there's always been a phenomenon, hasn't there, whereby the end honeys are irradiated and irradiated to make sure there are no germs and bacteria oh, course, there. Yes. But yet ours yeah. isn't. We, yeah. we had, oh, Milton, many, yeah. many years ago, a consultant from the Hampshire yes. who just had a bypass and came out with MRSA. Right. Yeah? Amazing. And he came and he says, Gloria, will your honey be any good? I said, really, you should use a manuka that's been irradiated. He said, I want to use yours. I know yeah. where it comes from. That's right. Yeah. And he took six jars and I didn't see him for about nine weeks. Honestly, Milton. Mm -hmm. And he came back. And where you've got here, the savinous vein, all down the leg that had been transplanted, of course, and he came back and he said, Gloria, look at my legs. He got shorts on, he got sandals on, and he said, I can now show my legs. It's been the most remarkable thing I've ever had. That's, and I've got his name. I mean, obviously, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't encourage people to use the honey on, on no. very bad infections, no. unless they've seen their doctor. Um, they can try with Manuka, and if Manuka doesn't work, they can ask their doctor to try these honeys. Of course. Um, again, 
one suspects that they'd want them sterilized in mm -hmm. some way. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, um, certainly on, on minor wounds you could use these without any problem. I think as well, if you have a child and they burn a bit of a kettle and whatever, and yeah, you that's burn kind yourself, of thing, yeah. marvellous, yeah, absolutely yeah. wonderful. So yeah, so for home yeah. remedies I think they're I fine. think it's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Milton, it's been a pleasure. I do well, know that you good. are... I know you're interested in many other things, yeah. and you are an asteroid. Well, is it what do you call an asteroid biologist? <laughs> asteroid biologist. Yeah, we call them uh, asteroid biologists. No, I, I, I call it myself astero. I know. Astero meaning astero. stars. I know. So yes, I have my my work firmly planted on the ground with honey, and into the uh, stratosphere and space with my astrobiology. Wonderful. So really, ET, thanks for coming home. Always and I hope well. You keep coming home here. <laughs> always, a, always, a, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Thank you.